We are the paradoxical ape. Bipedal, naked, large-brained. Long the master of fire, tools, and language, but still trying to understand ourselves. Aware that death is inevitable, yet filled with optimism. We grow up slowly. We hand down knowledge. We empathize and deceive. We shape the future from our shared understanding of the past. Carta brings together experts from diverse disciplines to exchange insights on who we are and how we got here. An exploration made possible by the generosity of humans like you. Today I'm going to talk about the sixth mass extinction, the tree of life, and the future of humanity. You will see here in the corner, this is a picture of a, a, my last book, it's called The Annihilation of Nature, where we cover a lot of this uh, uh, topic in more detail. Aldo Leopold said this in 1937, that we live in a world of wounds. And uh, as you can see, if you look around, you will see the impact of our TV everywhere. They have become so pervasive that you can see any place, anywhere in the world, the impact of human activities. Uh, one thing I like to emphasize now uh, is, first of all, that we only know one or two percent of all the plants and animals, uh, wild plants and animals in the planet. I mean, we really know very, very little of what are the species, the wild species here, and. What that indicates, on the one hand, that even though we have been uh, doing research on biodiversity for so long, uh, for 300 years at least, uh, we know so little. And this implicates that every time that we destroy some places, some habitats, some coral reefs, some uh, forests, we're losing many species that are not even known to science. And obviously, uh, while we're losing those species, we're losing the roles that they function in the ecosystems. This is an example of the work we do, and uh, in the last 10 years, more than 600 species of new mammals have been discovered. And you will expect that new mammals won't be so new in the sense that they are conspicuous, they are big, they are closely uh, associated to us, we are very attractive to them, and 600 species. So you can see here, for instance, there are uh, at least uh, 80 uh, species of new monkeys have been discovered. We are talking about uh, a deer, uh, are talking about uh, sloths, uh, antelopes, uh, and so many other species. Obviously, this is not unique for mammals, but it's also unique for so many other uh, groups of plants and animals. And most of the known and unknown species are found in tropics and in the sea. And this is very relevant because you can see we are very concerned about the destruction, for instance, of the Congo forest or the uh, uh, Sudation forest or the Amazon. And this is because one of the reasons is because those are incredibly diverse ecosystems that harbor uh, and maintain most of the species on the planet. In these uh, uh, photographs, uh, what we can see is the uh, new species found in a single, a single trip down to the uh, bottom of the, of, the, uh, sea, of the ocean. And in this particular trip, uh, 47 species of uh, new uh, animals were found, including the largest uh, animal known to, uh, to in, on Earth. It was a uh, worm-like animal that uh, uh, measured more than 50 meters. Unfortunately, uh, the great biodiversity of this planet, you know, uh, the diversity, the uh, plants and animals, all these uh, uh, magnificent uh, 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 creatures who have been here uh, with us since the beginning of our ancestors more than three million years ago are disappearing, are really 
uh, fast disappearing. And we know that this is a very fundamental uh, problem. This is one of the existential threats for humanity and one that is not considered properly as a nuclear holocaust and is basically the unprecedented loss of biodiversity. We're losing many, many species, we're losing hundreds of millions of uh, populations every year. And by doing so, we are uh, putting in, in peril the existence of life on the planet in particular and the existence of uh, humanity in, in general. Uh, we know, for instance, that the current situation uh, has to deal with a, a severe environmental problems. When I was doing my PhD uh, uh, 30 years ago, there were probably only one really global environmental problem. And this was um, basically the loss of the uh, ozone layer. Unfortunately, every three, four months, every two months, now in the scientific literature, there is a new environmental problem that is uh, from regional to global scale. And all the environmental problems has to be, uh, uh, the roots of all the environmental problems are basically three. One is the uh, human population growth. Second is consumption, overconsumption. And, th and third is technological uh, efficiency. Uh, these three root problems, what are causing is uh, uh, basically a, a global uh, climate disruption, habitat loss, overexploitation of a species, emerging diseases, invasive species, toxification, pollution, and so on. And all these uh, global environmental problems are basically leading now to a massive uh, loss of species and populations, a massive extinction crisis that we uh, are now, uh, that we know now that is uh, uh, the sixth mass extinction. And by losing all these species, by losing all these populations of wild plants and animals, we're basically eroding the capabilities of the planet to maintain life in general and to maintain human life in particular. We're losing the ecosystem services and goods and ecosystem services and goods, as I will explain later, are basic to maintain a human life on this planet. And this is a paper that I published last year with some of uh, many co-authors. And basically, it, with, uh, we gathered together from many disciplines in, in, in environmental sciences, and we decided to look at what was the status of uh, uh, very important indicators of the uh, uh, environmental conditions on the planet. And we knew that we were going to find a, a difficult situation, but we were really shocked when we came up with the, with the data and uh, with the, uh, our analysis. And basically what you can see here is that the red color indicate the loss of a specific environmental indicators, such as so biodiversity. And uh, it's clearly here that most of the indicators that we look at have lost 50% or more you know, in the last uh, few decades. Basically, uh, this uh, really indicates that uh, we are far beyond in terms of the, 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 uh, the loss of uh, these indicators and the planet that we expected. We call the paper underst underestimating the challenges of avoiding a ghastly future. And this was a, a dramatic title, but I think it was a, a, we, we choose it like that because it really what this indicates by, by losing all these uh, conditions were really putting in jeopardy the uh, uh, continuation of civilization on the first hand and of humanity on the long run. Going back to extinction, basically, we know that we have lost more than 1,000 species of vertebrates in the last 500 years. We have lost 1,000 species of mammals, birds, uh, reptiles, amphibians, and freshwater fishes. So uh, a few years ago with uh, my colleague Paul Ehrlich at Stanford, we uh, were talking about this and we said, okay, will this uh, normal or are these uh, elevated rates of uh, extinction? And let's remember that in evolution, extinction is one of the main process, ev evolution and speciation. This balance between losing species and, and new species being formed by uh, evolutionary processes is what uh, keeps the balance of life on earth. So uh, we didn't know what was the answer. So um, we were fortunate to uh, find out that there was a paper by Tony Barnowski and uh, their colleagues at the Berkeley University, 
where they have been able to estimate was where the normal of the background extinction rates for mammals in the last few million years. In other words, uh, they were able to estimate what was the uh, 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 balance, the uh, rates that were uh, 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 the extinction rates uh, found in the last few million years for mammals. And that particular uh, 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 data, that particular information was incredibly important for us because we could use that uh, uh, data, that information, to compare the previous extinction rates in the last few million years to the current extinction rates to find out if the current extinction rates were elevated. And um, we expected to, uh, to find out that the current extinction rates were elevated, but we didn't expect to find them so high. In the uh, course of the last uh, 600 million years, there has been uh, basically uh, uh, the diversity of life on the planet has followed this particular course, as we can see here in this graph. Here we have the uh, uh, million years, around 600 million years, and here have the numbers of families of uh, animals as an indicator of, of the diversity of uh, life on the planet. And as we can see here, first of all, is that right now, in this precise moment, we have the largest number of species alive in any point of time in the last 600 million years. So the diversity right now is in a pinnacle. It is the highest diversity found in many million years. The second thing we can see here is that this increase in species uh, indicates obviously that the extinction rates are lower than the speciation rates. And the third thing we can see here is that during this uh, last 600 million years, this has been five episodes where extinctions become very prevalent and we call this mass extinction, this period, because basically we lost 70% or more of all the plants and animals in the planet. Second, this was geologically uh, uh, very fast, uh, meaning that these animals were lost in hundreds of thousands of millions, or to hundreds of thousands of few million years. And third, all of these uh, five uh, mass extinctions were caused by a cat natural catastrophe, like the impact of a, 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 a meteorite on the planet 65 million years ago that evaporated the dinosaurs and many other species. So having this information, so what we did is compare the current extinction rate to the extinction rates in the last uh, few million years for the uh, vertebrates. And we have here the cumulative number of uh, 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 species evaluated for the International Union of, uh, uh, for the conservation of nature, that is the body that uh, uh, basically have the database on what the species are becoming extinct or what species are threatened on the planet. Here we have from 15, 1500 to present, and as you can see, the dot line will be the accumulated extinction, number of species extinct uh, during the background or normal uh, rates. So if the current extinction rates will be similar to the ones who have occurred in the last few million years, we will expect to have the lines below this dotted line. But as you can see here, basically this is completely different. We have a really high, really elevated uh, 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 rates of extinction for vertebrates, mammals, birds, and other uh, vertebrates, and all vertebrates together. Uh, clearly, you can see here clearly that the extinction rates have really uh, uh, elevated uh, since the 1800s. And here on the right, you can see here that basically uh, um, the uh, impact has been co is, uh, highly correlated, the number of species extinct with a, a human population. What we can see from the previous uh, 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 slide is that the species that were lost in the last 100 years should be lost up to 10,000 years in normal times. When we published this paper, I mean, people, uh, other scientists said well, the, the data was pretty convincing, but it was based only on vertebrates. But after we published this uh, paper in 2015, many other groups uh, start to look at the same trends in other animals and other plants. And unfortunately, unfortunately, the, what they found is that our data, uh, our results, our uh, 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 conclusions apply basically to all kinds of plants and animals in the planet, 
indicated, indicating that we have entered the six mass extinction. And unfortunately too, this particular one is not, had not been caused by the, uh, a natural catastrophe, but by our activities. When we look at the extinction, uh, species extinction, then we find out that was really, really bad. But then we uh, decide to look at, at population extinctions because one species is composed by many populations. By looking exclusively at uh, uh, species extinctions, we are underestimating the uh, real magnitude of the problem because one species is uh, made up by many populations. And uh, when you lose the species, you have lost all the populations. And it is important to understand that we could lose a species, we could lose most of the sp uh, populations of a species without losing the species. And we have uh, many examples, for instance, the, the, the uh, elephants has been lost across many places in Africa, but the species no, is not extinct and uh, we don't uh, still consider it extinct. It doesn't count in our evaluation of the extinction crisis, but in, many, in the many places that elephant has been lost, locally and regionally, it is like if it was a, a complete extinction because the role of the elephants on those places is gone. So in other words, there is a, it doesn't really matter if there are jaguars, for instance, in Brazil, if jaguars are lost in Mexico because the roles of jaguars are lost in this particular place. So by looking at that, what we find out is that we have really annihilated, we have really uh, destroyed so many populations and so many species that we call this the biological annihilation. And we call it biological annihilation because 50 million years ago, the number of species or the, spe uh, the populations that were being disappearing uh, were like very selective, big animals or animals with a very attractive fur or animals who were uh, very uh, uh, interested for um, the trade or for a, a particular characteristic uh, were the ones who were in danger. Now, uh, basically all kinds of plants and all kinds of animals are becoming extinct. A small, large, widespread, restricted to a single area, very colorful, uh, very uh, inconspicuous. Anyway, all kinds of uh, uh, animals and species are, are, are disappearing. One of the other things that is important to emphasize is that not all the plants and not all the animals are equal in terms of their evolutionary history. And many of the species of the plants and animals that we're losing are what we call uh, branches that are very unique in the tree of life. For instance, in this particular case, we have here the Tillandsin, who was this marsupial carnivore uh, from Australia and Tasmania that became extinct and it was the only representative of his genus. Or we have this, this bird, it was a mojo, and the whole family of these particular birds who used to live in Hawaii are uh, gone. So we're losing, not are, are losing many species, we're not losing also many populations, but we're losing many species that are very unique because represent a particular unique branches of the tree of life. So in this particular sense, by losing these species, we're changing the course of evolution because we are basically destroying many of the, uh, 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 we're losing the history of many of these branches. What are the drivers of these problems? Well, basically, as I said to the beginning, we have population growth one of, is one of the main problems. 300,000 people are added uh, to the population of the planet every day. Uh, around uh, uh, 100 million every year and around 1 billion every uh, 10 years. And this is unsustainable. There is no way we can continue growing like that. And we know that a population that is growing exponentially will eventually collapse or will uh, uh, stabilize. And it will depend, in this particular case, in the humans, if we collapse or we stabilize, will depend on the actions that we take in the next uh, coming decades, in the next one or two decades. We know that uh, um, the other problems, for instance, consumption, is a basic, uh, massive, uh, uh, has a massive impact on uh, uh, the diversity in the planet. 
we all consume too much. We all want a new computer, we all want a new car, we all want a new uh, cell phone uh, all the time. And in particular terms, I like to emphasize here the wildlife trade, habitat look, and climate change are some of the basic problems that we are losing so many species. Here, for instance, habitat loss. We have basically uh, destroyed since 1970, since 1970, we have destroyed 40%, uh, 60% of all the habitats that were left uh, at that time. By 1970, we have lost so many, but if we consider in 1970, the 100% of the uh, habitats that we have in, in, in particular uh, uh, in the planet, since then, we lost 60% of all. And basically, we're losing coral reefs, we're losing forests, we're losing tropical forests, we're losing uh, wetlands, mangroves, etc. And as you can see here in the map, you can see that uh, the dark areas indicate places where most, most of those landscapes has been uh, transformed into agriculture or uh, cattle pastures. And the ones who are not, who are in, in, in uh, uh, light color, basically are areas too cold, too dry, or a tropical forest who are very sensitive to change. And one of the major problems by, by, that are affecting our wildlife is basically over-exploitation and Ill illegal trade. These are pangolins. These pangolins are probably one of the most uh, 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 endangered species now. And this is a pangolin pit that is a, a more than 3,000 pangolins confiscated in Indonesia or Thailand a few years ago. And I have been many play many times in jungles, um, tropical forests in Africa and Asia where there are pangolins. And I have been only once been able to find one. And how do you end up having 3,000 pangolins, 7,000 pangolins, 10,000 pangolins in one shipment? I mean, uh, the uh, uh, mafias that are basically uh, driving the illegal trade are incredibly powerful. So, um, in terms of uh, the, the impact, for instance, of our activities of the illegal trade, every, every 30 minutes an African elephant is illegally killed. There will be no African elephants in the wild, probably in the year 2035 or so, if we don't stop this massacre. And um, on top of those, all these big impacts, uh, habitat destruction, illegal trade, uh, diseases, and so on, we are now facing, uh, start to face full force, the impact of uh, climate change. And uh, what we see and what we know is in the next two, three decades, the full blunt impact of climate change will be uh, uh, filled by a, a, a white plants and animals, and that will be, will probably have really devastating impacts on wild species. The numbers, just to give us an idea, we have lost around 40%, 40% of all terrestrial species have declined since 1970 to 2010. 80% of the freshwater fishes and around 40% of the marine species. 2% of all the big fishes that were found in the 1960s, only 2% charts, tuna fish and so on, are now living in the, our oceans. In terms of, bio, of the biomass, this is really, really, really uh, important to see that the 100% of all the biomass, animal biomass in the planet, 60% are farmland animals, farmed animals, 30%, the percent are humans, and only 4% are wild animals, only 4%. And we see here on the right, it's in terms of the birds, 70% of all the birds are chicken and other poultry. 70% of the biomass in the planet of birds is chickens and poultry. And 30% are the 11,000 wild birds. That's the magnitude of uh, the impact, of our impact in the, 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 the planet. So, why does this matter? Why do we have to care about it? Well, basically there are many reasons, ethical, philosophical, religious, and so on. The most important one is probably that 
all these plants and animals are basic are, uh, enough, are basic, uh, fundamental to maintain what we call environmental services. And environmental services are basically all the benefits that we get from free provided by wild plants and animals and microorganisms. And uh, environmental services are, for instance, the clean water, essential for human survival, the proper combinations of the gases of the atmosphere, and the fertilization of all the soils in the planet, the pollination of all our crops. 70% of the crops that we use uh, now are pollinated totally or partially by uh, uh, wild animals like bees, bats, uh, uh, hummingbirds, and so on. Um, but we're destroying, we're destroying the wildlife, as we said, uh, with illegal trade. And for instance, here, this is a, a wildlife providers and the natural ecosystem providers uh, 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 help us to avoid diseases. And this is the, uh, basically uh, the origins of COVID. You can see here a, a place, uh, most likely in, uh, this is in Southeast Asia, probably Indonesia or China, where they have the wild animals and the uh, domestic animals all together, piled together. They pee and poo one on top of each other. They don't look uh, healthy and they transmit disease uh, among each other. Wild animals transmit diseases to domestic animals and so on, uh, um, uh, domestic animals to the wild animals and so on. And this guy is sitting there and obviously he could get very easily one of these diseases infected to him. And this is what happened in COVID-19. And the animals in those places are called wet markets because they basically are being killed there. You can see the, the floor is covered by blood, by water, and uh, the conditions to get diseases jump to one species to the other are perfect there. And the consumption of the wild species is just really unthinkable. Just in China, 100 million individuals, most of them from the illegal trade, are being sold every year, gener generating $74 billion in profit and employing 14 million people. That's the magnitude of the problem. And as we say here, environmental uh, uh, services provided by nature are very important. For instance, here we have uh, uh, mangroves give us a lot of uh, important things like protecting us against uh, hurricanes, tsunamis, uh, uh, flood, and so on. But what, what we do with the, with the mangroves? We transform it in housing, shrimp farms, and crops. So basically, what we're doing by destroying nature, by causing all these impacts uh, on, uh, on the web of life, see, uh, uh, what we're doing is basically putting in, really putting in, 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 in big trouble. On the one hand, the ecosystems and the wild plants and animals of the planet, but on the other hand, we are paradoxically really threatening our own existence. If we continue, we believe, and we have the data to, 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 to think that what we're, we're saying is uh, correct, that if we don't act in the next uh, 15, 10, 15, 20 years, uh, there is uh, the possibility of a big collapse of uh, uh, civilization. It is real, very real. And uh, that collapse could happen in no more than two, three decades. Um, so this is why, uh, why do we have to act? So what we can do, as I, I say to most of, of, of my uh, students and the people when I give talks in Mexico and elsewhere, we have to become actors. We have to stop to being spectators. There is so much at stake. Basically, what is at stake is the future of evolution, of, of, of the evolution of life on the planet. There is uh, at stake future of uh, all plants and animals. There is at stake the future of uh, a civilization, and there is a stake, a st a stake uh, the future of humanity. Uh, the good news is that there is a still time. The bad news is that the window of opportunity is rapidly closing and what we don't do in the next 10, 15, 20 years, uh, we won't be able to do it because it will be probably too late. Thank you very much for listening. Thank you.